Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. Hello. So we're super excited about filming this video today and it was actually a suggestion from you guys from the comments and we thought it was such a good video idea. Yeah, really, <laughs> really good idea. So we are going to be doing our Disneyland Paris quick fire favourites. Yes. And so we've got different categories, 10 categories I ten believe. 10 categories. To do with Disneyland Paris and we're going to give you uh, our favourite top three. Yes. So it'll go in order, like our third, second, and then our top favourite. Yeah. But this afternoon, we've just been watching vlogs, having a chill day, and we have written our answers to them all, but we haven't shown each other yet. Nope. So we're really interested to see if they're the same, or yeah. if they're like completely different. We had discussions about the categories, but we didn't say what we'd chosen. No, so it's gonna be interesting uh, to see. I, I think they'll be similar, but maybe they won't. Yeah, <laughs> let's get going. Oh, and apologies if you can hear a rumbling in the background. It's the washing machine. <laughs> it should end soon. <laughs> so the first category is top three rides. So a very important thing at Disneyland Paris for us. We love the rides and it's so hard to pick a top three. It was really difficult. They were, mine kept changing. <laughs> So we're both, so I'll say number three and then... Yeah, we'll work our way to our favourite. Yeah. Okay, so my number three is Big Thunder Mountain. My number three is Big Thunder Mountain. Yeah, yeah you started off! <laughs> <laughs> it's the same. Oh, it's just an epic ride. Big Thunder Mountain is just a classic. Um, it reminds me of my childhood, but yeah. then it's also so good at Disneyland Paris of like all the different elements to it. And it's one which we, we ride a lot when we yeah. go. We always, uh, well, when the fast passes were in operation, we'd always go in the morning and get a fast pass for Big yeah. Thunder Mountain so that we knew that we, we were getting on it that day. Yeah. All right, so I'll do the next one. So in second place for me, it has to be, but it's moved on right up to the top of the list uh, from like the last time that we sort of did a video where we mentioned favorite rides. Number two is Phantom Manor. My number two is Tower of Terror. Ah, yeah. <laughs> now Tower of Terror actually was, spoiler, was uh, bumped from my list because of because of Phantom Manor. <laughs> Don't talk to me. <laughs> but it's I love Tower of Terror. It was such a difficult decision to make. But I just thought about the amount that I've looked into Phantom Manor, the backstory, yeah. and, and the video I did. I was it's like, like your favorite it's got to be up there somewhere. I just. I've always loved Tower of Terror, especially at Disneyland Paris. I think it's like extra creepy and it's extra creepy now with the new uh, refurb they did with all the different stories, yeah. the little creepy girl. Come with me. Oh, like <laughs> Tower of Terror, it's a classic. I love it. Oh, it so, I really hope they never change it at Disneyland Paris. Okay, will our number one be the same? I feel like it might. <laughs> one, two, three. Hyperspace Mountain. So I didn't say it at the same time because I was going to say the, the full title. <laughs> Star Wars, oh, Star Hyperspace, Wars Mountain. Hyperspace Mountain. And I panicked. I was like, what, what version are you going to say? <laughs> Yay, we got the same number one. Yeah. It's just the best ride. Yeah, oh, the way that it shoots you off at the beginning of the ride. I mean, it's so intense compared to Orlando. the other uh, Space Mountain that we've been on. Um, the loops of the sound effects. We just have such an amazing time when we're on that ride. And I remember for so long, Martin wouldn't ride it. I think for two trips, you were too mm. nervous to go on it. Yeah. And every time I'd come off and I'd be like, I know that that's going to be his favorite <laughs> ride. Because not only is it such a good roller coaster, it's Star Wars as well. And I was just like, I know he's going to love this. Yeah. So then the first uh, time you went on it and you loved it, I was like, yes. Yeah, and then I like overcame my fear of it. I even uh, went on it by myself because we did single oh, rider. Yeah, we did. <laughs> and as you'll know, if you watch the vlogs, one of our trips, we wrote it ten times. That's yeah. how much we love it. Yeah. <laughs> so the next category is restaurants, and this was tricky as well because we just grouped all the restaurants together. Yeah. Um, I know some people if they film this video, they've done favorite quick service, favorite um table service, but we mm. grouped them all together. So it's just top three favourite restaurants. Yeah. And actually there was one that um, isn't open at the moment, so I didn't include it on my list. Oh, okay. But uh, Restaurant of Stars. Is that one of your favourites? It's an honourable mention. Oh. I just thought it, every time we went when it was like a buffet, mm. we always got sat down quite quick and then they had red velvet cake. and They did have red velvet cheesecake. cake. Cheesecake. Mm. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> our top three. So in at number three for me. No. 
Hakuna Matata. Oh, is it? Yeah. Right, okay. It is definitely my favourite quick service at Disneyland Paris. I really, really enjoyed it. I love the whole feel of the restaurant. Um, I love the Lion King theming. I really like the food. Um, it was quite quiet when we went. I think mm. we went like dead on um, midday. Yeah, we went when lunch was sort of starting. And I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed the whole experience. And it's just, yeah, my favourite quick service. Okay, so that's your number three. My number three is... La Grange at Billabab's, Billabab's. Uh, Western Saloon. So quite a long name it's got. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's a buffet that I don't know why. I just absolutely love it. And I wouldn't you say do. that there's anything in particular that's really like special about no. the food. But I just love the ambience, the atmosphere. Um, I do love sort of uh, fajitas and that sort of stuff. So that's the food that's on offer. And what I love about Billy Bob's is like even just walking in. Yeah. And then you get the atmosphere. Then you walk all the way up to the top of the yeah. restaurant, and there's normally stuff going on as you're walking. Yeah, out you might and... see you might see line dancing. You might yeah. see you want someone twirling <laughs> some some guns and stuff like that as a cowboy. Um, yeah, there's just lots going on, and I, also it's a nostalgia thing as well because I think the first time we went to Disneyland Paris, we pretty much ate at Billy Bob's nearly every night. Yeah. <laughs> So then, in at my number two is Billy Bob's. Oh, is it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is funny, because my number two is Akuna Matata. <laughs> <laughs> so we just switched them. Yeah. Again, for the same reasons that I think it's nostalgic, but also we always go to Billy Bob's, and we always have such a good night there. I love that it's in Disney Village, so it's, like, close to the parks, yeah. but not too far away, so we always book it for, like, when the parks close, and we go over there. And we just love it, don't we? Yeah, we're, uh, Hakuna Matata. I again, same as Helena, the theme in, uh, but the food. I was the really, food was good for I was really service. impressed with the food for that one. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so do we have to say number one? I feel like we might again. I, th- I, th- I think I know what Should we say be. at the same time? Bistro Chez Remy. Yeah. Well, it has to be though. Yeah. <laughs> it was just oh, it was just a, a le- whole other level above yes. anything that we've had in any restaurant. In Disneyland Paris. It's so, so nice. And the theming is so good as well. As well as the food yeah. and the atmosphere being nice. The theming, like you literally feel like you shrunk down to the size yeah. of a rat. It's so clever, like looking at how they've made like the chairs. Yeah. And even the um, like the umbrellas yeah. that you sit under. And yeah, there's just so much. And of course, it was the restaurant that we went to um on the night of our engagement so it's just always going to hold such a special place in our hearts and we actually haven't been there since no and it was the first table service yes that we'd been to been to yeah um that wasn't a buffet i feel like we need to go back because we haven't been back since that night yeah, we, we always be. go and like look at it and take photos outside of it but it would be nice to to go back to, there. to revisit yeah and then we did that thing where we <laughs> i don't know if they if they'll do it anymore yeah but um the hack that someone gave us where we said, can we get the chef to sign our napkin? And the chef, we didn't know what was going to happen. The chef yeah. came out and signed a chef hat. Yeah. And gave it to us. So it's like a really nice, we still have it now, a really nice souvenir. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think it would always be, probably always be our favourite. Yeah. We love it. The next one is going to be snacks. Snacks. <laughs> Do you want to start? Uh, I'll start, yeah. Actually, I found this really tricky because I don't think we've had as many snacks at Disneyland Paris than we have at Walt Disney World. Walt Disney World. Also, I think there are more snacks at Walt Disney World in general. Yeah, but I think in the bakery, I have noticed um, Mm. there's a selection of different stuff. So, yeah, I think next time might might be a bit adventurous Yeah, and try something different. Uh, Well, like, number three for me is from the bakery and it's it's just a chocolate muffin. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> I remember that we, we we just wanted to sit down for a little bit. We went in the bakery and it was a time where it wasn't like really busy and we sat down and had a cup of tea. And... Did it have like the melted chocolate inside? I think so, yeah. And we ate it like in the walkway bit. That's right, yeah. yeah. before we went over to studios. I believe so. Yeah, that was a good muffin actually. Yeah, so <laughs> I'll, I'll go with that. I don't know what it, if it had a proper name. I think it was just like a chocolate muffin. <laughs> <laughs> so my number three is at Sequoia Lodge at the Redwood Bar and Lounge and it was the cheese board that oh, we yeah. that we got with our well, I, I had a glow teeny and I think you just had a beer but we ordered a cheese board uh, with grapes and um, all different types of cheeses and bread 
and it was so good. I completely forgot about that, but yeah. It was really a, nice. That's a great shout. That was. I mean, it's a bit of a, like a posh snack, <laughs> and it's definitely one which you um, you probably are able to get it somewhere in the park, but it's definitely more of a sit down if you're having a drink oh, in yeah. one of the bars. Um, really recommend getting that. But it was so cosy, yeah. and we just had our drinks, had this cheese board, we were by the roaring fire, and um, I just remember being like, that was a good shout getting that. <laughs> <laughs> It was. Number two is we're in second place is the chocolate and hazelnut balls snap that's my number two they are so yummy yeah the only downside is they go so quick you don't get that many you don't of get them, that do many you? and we always share and then i'm like oh i wish i had one to myself we could, we could, we could really buy two bags yeah, couldn't we? We, should. <laughs> we sometimes tend to get them before um like an event so we'll get them before the fireworks or we'll get them before the parade mm-hmm. so that we have a little snack um as we watch something and we ration them out we were yeah. like we'll have one before the parade We'll have one after the parade. Because <laughs> I just don't want to eat them too fast. <laughs> but they are lit- they're basically little um, chocolate... Um, are they called beignets? Beignets, I think that's what they're called, yeah, yeah. in France. But they're basically little just um, little chocolate dough balls, essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, they're really sweet and they're just really like easy to eat and they're so good. Yeah. <laughs> so I have a feeling that we, again, so far we've had the same number one and I think it's going to happen again. Yeah, okay. okay yeah, we can do this one at the same time. Three, two, one. Fudge! fudge. Yay! Yes. <laughs> the fudge from the sweet shop on Main Street. Yeah. What is it? You get buy four, get... No, buy three, get one free? I can't remember what Something it was. Something like that. Or buy four for the price of three. Four for the price of three. <laughs> I mean, we don't know if that's still going on, but when we went, it was for for the price of three. They have so many different flavours. My personal favourite is the triple um, chocolate. So you get white chocolate, dark chocolate and milk chocolate, I believe. Yeah. Um, The mint one's also really good. We got a lemon one. Caramel one, a lemon one, a vanilla one. All sorts of flavours. Oh, they are really good. And they last quite a long time compared to like the chocolate balls. Oh yeah, like well it lasted, it lasts for the whole time they were there. Yeah, Yeah. because they're very sweet. Um, You, well you could eat one in one go, but I tend to like save it a little bit more. And we always get it before we watch the fireworks (laughs) so we'll make sure we go to the sweet shop get the fudge and then we'll wait for the fireworks for like 10 minutes normally in that like little seated area by the shops yeah and oh it's just become a really special tradition and um yeah we brought back some fudge for my family as well last time (laughs) and they loved it they're big they're, they're like bricks okay so the next category is hotels and so we didn't do um just hotels that we've stayed at We've done hotels that we've uh, we've like looked around, yes, um, and maybe even hotels that we hopefully one day will stay at. So basically, just our favourite hotels, yeah, um, on Disney property. Yeah. yeah, Disney hotels. Okay, so in at number three for me, Sequoia Lodge. Okay. I stayed in there as a child with my family, but I haven't stayed in there recently. But I think the thing that put it in my top three is I love the bar there. Yeah, yeah. And also I just love the whole ambience of the hotel. I'm not sure about the rooms because I haven't seen them recently. Um, but the whole vibe of the hotel is just really... I feel like it's right up our street. Like, oh, yeah, because we the love... The lodge feel, yeah. the fires. My favourite time of year is like autumn and winter. And I just... It has all of that. And it just gives me that like cosy Disney vibe <laughs> yeah it is a good one it was between that and something you else didn't make for me I, no. number, three. number three i put newport bay oh okay because it's somewhere that i'd really love to stay actually mm-hmm. we had a wander around uh and it just looked really uh stylish and yeah the nautical i like theme. yeah i like the nautical theme and the colors and it's every time we walk from because uh, recently we've been staying in high park and then walking in and then as you walk in you see it yeah. On the right hand side. It's and I'm a like, great oh, location. That'd be great to stay <laughs> in. <laughs> so in at number two for me is Hotel Cheyenne. Oh. And it's for nostalgic reasons, but also I think it's just a really good hotel, especially for the price as well. Uh, we can normally get quite a good deal when we stay there. And I think the theming is really good um, for that whole like saloon feel, Toy Story feel. So yeah, Hotel Cheyenne. 
It's my number two. <laughs> so I've actually gone for number one. I'm making a one that we've actually stayed in. Okay. And so I think my number two is, is going to be your number one. Um, but this is just purely because we haven't stayed in it. Yeah. If we'd stayed in it, I, well, yeah, I think it would be number one. <laughs> and it's the Disneyland Hotel, which is just right on the doorstep of Disneyland Paris. So that would just be incredible to just <laughs> come down from your room and you're straight in it. Um, the, yeah. The way that it looks is just incredible. I don't know what it's like to stay in it, but I would like to find out one day. <laughs> So yeah, we switched our one and two yeah. because my number one is Disney Lad Hotel because I just it's on my bucket list to stay there one day. We always walk around it. Mm-hmm. Uh, we always go to Cafe Fantasia. And we pretend that we're staying there. And pretend that we're staying <laughs> there. I love that at Christmas they have that amazing display as you walk in with like the gingerbread house and the tree. Everything about it looks incredible. I'm sure the rooms are amazing. And my dream is when, whenever we're walking back and the fireworks are on, we always see people on their balconies <laughs> looking out, watching the fireworks. And my dream is to one day stay in one of those rooms with the balcony mm. and to watch the fireworks from the yeah. balcony. Yeah. Well, I, it's such a stunning hotel. My dream it's is just beautiful. to to watch fireworks in the park and then... Your hotel's right there. I know. <laughs> Just go up to Cafe Fantasia. Oh. <laughs> so my number one uh, is because we've stayed there uh, quite a few times. I'm just, I'm in love with this place. <laughs> uh, it, and I really miss it. Hotel Cheyenne. Yeah, we haven't stayed there in a while. The last time we stayed there was our um, engagement oh. trip. Yes, I think. Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah. Because then we went to the bar there and stuff, didn't yeah. we, when we got engaged. But yeah, I love... Well, I mean, I'm a massive, if you didn't know, a massive <laughs> Toy Story fan. So you can't get any better, really. Um, there's even, like, some... Well, there's Woody all over the, the actual room. The lamp that's I the shape of the lamp. boot. Um, the chaise long. Yeah. Which I always tend to set up camp on. <laughs> uh, I love it. I love the way that the overall outside of the... Uh, the hotel looks Mm -hmm. and how every it looks like a wild west town and every uh, set of rooms is named after a different person from the wild west yeah it's really cool it's like being on a film set next is shops Uh, so I'm going to start with number three (laughs) it's the Emporium on Main Street USA oh okay that's interesting well the reason is mainly because of the person that welcomes you into the Emporium (laughs) which is our good friend uh, the statue New Guy Ralph (laughs) hey yeah New Guy Ralph would be pretty annoyed if we didn't mention the Emporium (laughs) to be fair sorry New Guy Ralph I didn't but it is a very big store so (laughs) yeah I think that's uh, that's my number three okay in at number three for me World of Disney yes in Disney Village because I just think it's the shop that we bought the most from. Mm. We always tend to go after the park closes and it's just something I always look forward to. I'm always like, oh, I need to go into World of Disney at the end of the day. And I I feel like they have a really good selection of merchandise and we got our lanyards from there. Yeah. I've got photo albums, albums. um, mugs, spirit jerseys. T-shirts. Um... And I much prefer it to the Disney store in Disney Village. Oh, the one that's like opposite. Yeah, Yeah, I feel like there's just a better selection of merch in um, World of Disney. And I just think it looks really cool. We always get a photo outside with the statues of um, yeah. Mickey and Minnie. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I just think World of Disney is like a classic in Disney Village. Really recommend going like after, two hours after the party. If you've maybe gone for yeah. food... And then go into the World of Disney Store because it is just empty compared to when the park first empties. Yeah, when the park first closes, it is busy because obviously <laughs> everyone goes before they get on the train and before yeah. they go to the hotel. Um, so we normally will go to Billy Bob's or Sports Bar or somewhere yeah. and then we'll go at like around, like in winter, around like nine-ish. Yeah. But of and, course, yeah. everything we're referring to is when we've been there when the current situation hasn't been happening yeah this is all um, (laughs) pre the pandemic so we're not sure how because we haven't been yet with um, all the restrictions in place we're not sure if it's still um, like that but yeah from our experience it was very quiet around then 
in second place for me is a one that we've only recently found. It might be the same. It's the Storybook Store. Oh, no, no. Oh. No. No, no the Storybook Store has so much in it that you won't find it in any of the other shops. It's all based around books, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, but you've got notebooks in there. You've also got prints that you can purchase. But uh, but books, yeah, like you can, if they're in stock, like the Pipes the Caribbean book and the Phantom Manor book. Um, and also, when you look up at the ceiling, you've got all the characters dotted yeah. around. Okay, so shop number two, I had to search on the app to find out what the, it's actually called. And I do believe it's called Thunder Mesa Mercantile, Mercantile Building. I'm not sure of that word. Um, but it's opposite um, Thunder Mountain um, in Frontierland. And I think you know the name of the outside. Of the uh, it's got design. a sign outside that says Tobias Norton and Sons. And it's such a good shop for like finding, I don't know, we seem to find like little things that we love. And I think it's along that same line of we like all that cosy autumn lodge kind of feel. And they have a lot of uh, merch, which is similar to that. They've got Mm -hmm. like jumpers and mugs and um, it's got some hidden gems in there. Split into different sections, isn't Mm. it? It's quite a big store. And then you've got like Wild West characters around the ceiling as well. Yeah. But the clothing in particular, I got my Phantom Manor. Yeah, uh, jumper from which there. we didn't see anywhere else, and I got my um, like vintage looking uh, Disneyland Paris oh, yeah. grey jumper from there. They also sell sweets. They do. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I love that shop and mugs as well. <laughs> Very important for us. Uh, well, in at number one is the one with Tobias Norton and Sons little... outside. <laughs> I love we just keep swapping stuff. Yeah. Although I I know what you're you don't know what I know what you're gonna say is. number one is, but I actually forgot to write that down. I forgot to include it. <laughs> My number one is the Christmas shop, which officially <laughs> is called La Boutique de Chateau. And that is inside the castle and it is Christmas all year round in that shop. It's very small, that's yeah. the only thing. You don't want to go when it's really busy. Um, but it's just, I love Christmas. I love everything about Christmas decorations. We always go and get a Christmas decoration from each trip. And it's just the most magical store. We did we get a... We got Oasis Winnie. We got Oasis Winnie from there. Yeah. <laughs> they always sell like the Christmas versions of the plushes. And it's magical. It's it, And also I feel like if you don't know it's there, you might miss it because mm. it is very hidden away. Um, it's at the back of the castle. Um, but inside and if you love Christmas you have to visit yeah and one of the first things we do is go in and scout the Christmas decorations yeah and then we always get it on like the last day <laughs> um, but I love looking at them all and they always have like new ones in but then they also have all the classic ones um, and we've got some really special decorations from there yeah it's a good one so the next category is lands so this is Disneyland Paris lands so in at number three for me, Main Street USA. Fantasyland. Oh, okay. <laughs> Main Street USA for me just because I love walking into it, especially at the beginning of the trip, seeing the castle for the first time. I love like the music, the smells, mm-hmm. the sounds. And it just, it's, when you walk down Main Street USA, <laughs> um, I just feel like, oh, I'm at Disney. You're back. Yeah. yeah. And then you've got all the shop windows, yeah, which just look incredible that somebody's put together. Uh, my third year, like I said, uh, Fantasyland. Yes. Because I think Fantasyland just screams that it's Disney. Disney as well, um, yeah. You've got rides there that are really nostalgic and rides that are really classic. So I th- anytime I see a carousel, mm. I think Disney. Yeah. So yeah, it's got the carousel there. It's got the uh, it's got Peter Pan's flight, which is just you know. Do you know who it also has? Who? Creepy hyena. Creepy hyena. It's, got, <laughs> it's a small world. It's one of our favourites. And well. it also has creepy hand. And creepy hand. So yeah. But it's home to a few of the creepies. There's a lot of friends in Fantasyland. So <laughs> that's why it's number three. <laughs> so number two for me. Frontierland. Same. Is it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. In Frontierland. Oh, we might have the same number one again. Yeah, I think we are. Uh, so Frontierland, um, it's basically just home to such good rides. Um, Big Thunder Mountain, Phantom Manor, um, also like the Lucky Nugget Saloon. The whole theming of the area yeah. is just really, really good. And obviously because you've done so much research yeah. for um, Phantom Manor, 
um, you know more than me, but I feel like it has a lot more history than the other um, yeah. lands. There's yeah. a lot of story to it, and it's all all the rides are like connected as well. Um, obviously, it has that amazing shop. Um, I love it during Halloween when all the cocoa decorations are out. Mm-hmm. Um, I just think it's incredible. If you want to know a bit more about the history of like Frontierland and Phantom Manor, I'll put a eye to the video I did, a Brief History of Phantom Manor. But yeah, you've you've said it all there. It's yeah. just it's got it's got a lot to it. The theme and it's fantastic. It's got the uh, Wild West section, the Legends of the Wild West. Oh yeah, when you first go you can, in, it's like a bit of an exhibit. That you can go around and look at the different uh, mannequins. Also, it did have the Chaparral Theatre as well. Chaparral around Theatre, the corner, yeah. Obviously not at the moment. Okay, so shall we say number one at the same time? Yeah. Three, two, one. Discovery, Discovery Land. Land. Yeah. Again, I think because it's just a home to our favourite ride, Star Wars Hyperspace Mountain. Mm-hmm. We love Star Tours. Oh, Star Tours. And I think, I don't know if this is the same for you, but I think what puts it at number one is how it looks at night. And yeah. when dusk like falls. Yeah, I I think it's the best looking land mm. on a night time. Yeah. With yeah. all the lights twinkling and I think I got some quite good photos on the last trip, um, when it was like early evening, which is my favourite time yeah. in the parks. I love about like five, six o'clock. Um, I love that time. And uh yeah, it just looks magical. It has such good rides. The water glows the water. where the Nautilus is. The only thing I would say is I feel like it's the busiest land. It always feels quite busy, and I don't know if that's the way it's set up or whether mm. everyone loves it as much as us. <laughs> um, mm. But it does tend to be really busy. Um, but, yeah, it's still my number one. Oh, so much there. Constellations, that, that shop. That good. Yeah, that nearly made my list, actually. Buzz Lightyear. Buzz Lightyear We always there. have our yeah. tournament. And we spend a lot of time in Discovery Land. Yeah, and Autopia as well. Um recently sort of opened which we haven't had a chance to get back on oh and one of my favorite memories is going on the orbitron oh that was so funny hell no no lost the hat i was looking at photos on my instagram <laughs> the other day and i i saw that photo where it's like a really nice photo and then you swipe left and then um it's the one where you're holding my hat on yeah. <laughs> just made me laugh next is character meets so this is like our favorite character meets that we've done in at number three i've gone for jafar okay um, we met Jafar and it was just a really funny meet and greet. We were really lucky because he turned up and there was only maybe two groups or one group mm. in front of us. And then when we walked towards him, he like beckoned us in. So it was really like was eerie. Creepy. Um, but it was really immersive and he even tried to like hypnotize us with his staff. Um, but what was funny is that maybe a week before we'd done a video and in it there was a question, I think it was a tag and it was a question about most overrated villain. And Helena said Jafar. So I was terrified. <laughs> and I was like, oh no, he's going to know. <laughs> uh, so in at number three for me is Phantom Mickey. So we met Phantom Mickey outside of Phantom Manor. And we hadn't planned for this. We didn't even know he was going to be there. And then we saw him and we were like, oh my gosh, <laughs> that's Mickey Mouse and the Phantom. Like... This is like our dream. Yeah. Um, so we managed to get a line Bertie at the last minute. We didn't really have to queue very long. Um, we got some amazing photos of him being all spooky. And it's just one of my favourite meet and greets. And also it's really nice because it was um, not planned, but also he's not there all the time. So I feel mm. like it was really special. And um, I remember we got quite a few comments on the um, photo like... <gasps> Oh my gosh like we never see mickey in this outfit yeah. and it just felt really like unique and special i believe at the moment they're doing a photograph in that same spot where they take your picture and then inserted is the phantom oh. well my number two is phantom mickey is it? <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. for the same reasons well for my love of phantom manor as well yeah for to be if i can't meet the phantom which i can now <laughs> But um, if I couldn't meet the Phantom, to meet Mickey Mouse dressed up as the Phantom. So he was showing that he loved that ride as well. Yeah. Yeah, it was great. (laughs) Uh, So in at number two for me was meeting Goofy in the entrance to the studios. (laughs) Um, It was such a fun meet and greet. Again, I really like the backdrop as well that Mm -hmm. he stands in. Um, He normally is in his um, director's outfit whenever we've seen him before but when we got our photo he was in his traditional outfit so i don't know if they they changed that up um, but either way he always looks really cool cast member was really lovely goofy gave me like the biggest hug ever 
Uh, and the photos we got with him were so much fun. Um, we're like genuinely like mm. laughing in them mm-hmm. and he's like kicking his foot up and yeah, they're really special photos. And also it was the first time we'd met Goofy. It um, was. At Disneyland Paris. Yeah, Disneyland so, Paris. So that was pretty cool as well. And then in at number one, I think we might have picked this. I don't know if we have though, so I'm not as confident to do it okay, at the same you. time. So I've gone for Chip and Dale. I've gone for Chip and Dale. Oh, <laughs> they were just really interactive. Um, from the moment they like ventured out into the park, um, they were <laughs> getting in the line. Yeah. I think it was Chip that stood right in front of me. <laughs> and, and you were like, you're getting in the line, as if he, Yeah, as if he was going to go and meet Dale. Uh, and then they just wouldn't stop, would they? They were just teasing each other. and they... We had a really long meet and greet as well. Yeah. Um, and um, I remember they were like going through all our pins. And um, yeah, it was really nice. And also we timed it perfectly because we went to their first meet and greet of the day. I think we got there like 10, 15 minutes before the meet and greet started. So we were second in line. Um, so we didn't have to wait very long. Um, everything about it was just really like mm. really good and yeah. also we'd wanted to meet them for years uh, we said pretty much every trip like oh I wish we'd met Chip and Dale uh, so when we eventually did we were like we've been waiting years to meet you yeah. <laughs> and one thing I'm glad about is that there's still the opportunity to do character meets yes. though though you can't get close to them um, I've seen lots of people having still really interactive meet and greets a lot good. of um, people have said that the, um, if they've gone recently um, during the pandemic, their um, the character meet and greets are like one of the best things. Oh. Like they've really enjoyed them. Like even though they're a bit different, yeah, uh, they've been really good and they've managed to see a lot, a lot of characters. So next is bars. Mm-hmm. I feel like we might have similar for this. So in at number three, sports bar. Sports me. bar. Did you say? Yeah, I think the sports bar. Now, the sports bar isn't the most glamorous of the bars at Disneyland Paris, but I feel like it's just really good fun. Um, They have the outside seating area with all the heaters, like the heaters, you can sit out there in winter. It's in a prime position, like in the middle of Disney Village. So if you're waiting for a restaurant reservation, you can just pop into sports bar. The drink prices are cheaper than other bars we found um, in general. And yeah, it's just a classic and we just really like it. The atmosphere's good. If you're a sports fan, obviously they play like football and all other sports on the big screen. Yeah, Um, yeah, we really like it. I love the location of it and that being able to sit outside even when it's cold. Okay, so in at number two for me, (laughs) Cafe Fantasia. Oh, same! I, I, feel, would, I think we've got the top three. I thought you would have put that as number one. Oh, no. Uh, so Cafe Fantasia was so close to being number one, um, but there was another bar that pipped it to the post. Um, but Cafe Fantasia is in the Disneyland Hotel, and it, do, it does do the best drinks. <laughs> it does really, really good cocktails. It does good. I had a beer cocktail there, oh, yeah, I remember once, and that was really nice. It's very small. Um, we've luckily been uh, during the day mm-hmm. when it hasn't been very busy. I'm not sure how busy it gets at night, um, but we've always managed to get a really nice seat, always by the window as well. Yeah. So we watch people coming into Disneyland. Um, obviously it's very um, glamorous it's very uh, swanky (laughs) Um, it's got like a a little tribute table to Walt Disney and then it's got like music notes on the walls okay so number one I feel like we've got the same one okay go on you ready three two one Redwood Redwood Bar I couldn't remember if I had more of a title (laughs) Redwood Bar I think it's like Redwood Bar and Lounge yeah but basically it's the bar in Sequoia Lodge and it's the coziest bar it's that we've been to. It just has the best atmosphere. So cozy. The lighting just makes you feel relaxed, I think, because um, it's slightly darker. It's definitely one to go to in the evening. Yeah, we've been. I think we did it so that we we'd seen the fireworks already on the trip. So then we went before the fireworks finished. Yeah. To make sure that there were. Uh, seats available it's quite big and they do have like different seating we managed to get a really comfy seat by the fire yeah we've sat in a few different locations but we actually got prime spot once yeah and we actually sat right next to the fire it was because the cast member was so sweet and he noticed that someone had left and he came up to our table and was like do you, do you want it yeah it's free and we were like yeah so we ran over and <laughs> so the next one is our top three insta spots Mm -hmm. at Disneyland Paris so in at number three for me 
is I always find this quite hard to describe. So this is it's a foot of the castle, mm-hmm. but it's a it's a spot that as you walk towards the castle, uh, if you go left as if you're gonna go through to the dragon, mm-hmm. there's a little sort of circular area where not a lot of people tend no. to go to get a photo. But if one of you crouches down on the floor with the camera and shoots upwards, then you get the whole castle to yourself in a photo. And yeah, you don't really have many people in the yeah. background, so maybe like one or two. And most. then we, we even did it where we set up a tripod so that we were both in it with our spirit jerseys. Yeah. So in at number three for me is when we took a photo outside Phantom Manor at night. Oh yeah. And um, I think it worked really well because it was a little bit foggy that night as well. Um, but it was just outside of Phantom Manor as you're walk. You've just been on the ride and you're walking back, and um, there's like a uh, a fence. Yeah, like a fence. A, yeah. You stand in front of that. Um, but it was just one of the most incredible photos we've ever taken. Yeah. Um, it looks like a postcard. <laughs> we wanted it on a print, didn't we? Yeah. The uh, Phantom Manor just looks so eerie and creepy in the background. And um, the lighting was perfect. We took it on our Canon G Seven X with the flash on. Uh, but yeah, it's a really good photo spot. Yeah, it's got all uh, blues and purples sort of uh, projected on it at mm. night time. My second one is Dapper Dance. So if you go around to where the barbershop is, you'll see that there's a mirror on the wall, but <laughs> also on the wall is a big moustache. <laughs> and if you get someone to stand in the right position and take your photograph, then it looks like you've got the giant moustache. <laughs> It took us a few goes to get like the exact positioning, uh, yeah. but when you do it, it's really fun. <laughs> and then there's there's uh, there's two, and they're at two different heights as well, yeah. so everyone can get a picture. <laughs> so at number two for me is our engagement spot, uh, which is as you walk to Disneyland um, Hotel mm-hmm. as you're walking there, and it's on the left. Um, and it's one of the, um, so you've got like stairs and it's one of the like landings as you're going down. Um, but A, it's really special to us because of course it's where we got engaged. So we always have to get a photo there. But as well, it's just a really nice spot to get a photo because you've got the fountains behind you. Um, and then you've got Disneyland Hotel, which is stunning behind you as well. Um, so it is just a really lovely spot. It's definitely like a romantic spot as well to get, like if you're on a romantic break. Also, it'd be really nice, like family or whoever you're with, really. Um, but at night with all the um, fountains going off, it's just really special. Well, we actually liked it as an Insta spot uh, on our first trip when we went in 2017. We took the same position, same yeah. photo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, in it number one... Is our engagement spot for me? Well, in at number one for me, it's the castle picture. Oh, is it? You're number three. So we swapped, we swapped them round again. So I just think that castle spot is a really good find. Yeah. For Instagram especially, because everybody wants the photo of the castle with just you in it, and it's the best way to get that. Okay, so next is Disneyland Paris shows. And this is shows throughout the years. Um, so some of them aren't around anymore. Some of them are. Um, but yeah, we just shows that we've seen. Yeah. So in at number three for me is the 25th anniversary show, which was outside the castle. Number three. Number three, yeah. Um, even though I know it's going to be higher on <laughs> Um, even though it was incredible and I loved it, there was just a couple of other shows which I, I think are a little better. But it is really, really good. And it's, we watched it twice, oh, I believe, we, we or watched three it many times. times. Uh, the music was so, so good. And everything about it, all the characters, it was outside of the castle. We just loved it. It was such good fun. Um, and we didn't expect it to, we didn't expect to love it as much as we did. Uh, number three for me is a show that was on at Christmas. And it's the Mickey's Big Band Fair enough, Christmas yes. show. I loved this. It was the, everyone was wearing um, formal attire, um, and it was Christmas songs. It was very like glamorous. Very glamorous, it? yeah. Um, and you had an orchestra. You had a band, a big mm-hmm. band, um, and then the characters were were inserted into the show as well. Minnie, oh, Mickey and Minnie. Yeah, Mickey and Minnie did a dance. Yeah. Minnie did a song about oh, the piano so good. Uh, with a feather boa. Um, and then Mickey Mouse played the drums. He did at the end. <laughs> uh, the dancing and singing was amazing in it as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, I did enjoy that. It didn't make my top three, but I did really like it. And Goofy was dressed as Santa. Okay, so in at number two for me, Mickey and the Magician. 
Oh, okay. No, does that... You got a different number two? I got a different... Uh, oh, I, 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 this I, is where our opinions are different. Well, this was... It was really hard to come up with three shows, and it was a, it was a battle of who was going to yeah. get on there. And I, I will actually have to say that Mickey and the Magician did not make my top three, but that's not saying that I don't love it. I absolutely yeah. loved it, but I only had three spaces. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. It's Phantom of the Opera all over again. It's okay. So number two for me is Mickey the Magician. Um, I just think it's such a um, high standard of a show. I feel like it you wouldn't it wouldn't be out of place like on the West End. The set, the scenery, the costumes, um, having all the characters on there, um, the music. I love how the different sections you go through all the different films. Um, I just think it's really special. And Mickey does some great dancing. <laughs> does. So yeah, Mickey and the Magician, number two for me. Uh, in at number two is what I think Helena will have put as number one. Uh, so in at number two is Forest of Enchantment. <laughs> uh, so this was at the Chaparral Theatre. We didn't even know that this was on. We stumbled across this um, just just by chance. Uh, we watched it twice, I think, and it was all characters that are sort of in stories that take place in a mm-hmm. forest or near a forest. Uh, and then it had characters that I don't think you would necessarily have in some of the other shows. Mm-hmm. Like there was Tarzan who did like, what do you call it? Aerial, he did aerial yeah. work. Um, and there was the Phil Collins song was in there. Uh, Son of Man, I think was yeah. the one. But yeah, I, I thought it was great. Uh, and also Baloo and King Louie were in it. So in a number one for me is, of course, Forest of Enchantment. Basically everything that Martin just said. But personally for me, I just feel such a strong connection to that show. I loved it the first time we saw it. Um, I think I just like the whole nature forest vibe of it. The characters are like all my favourite characters. Um, I really like the songs. They're like original songs for the show. And they also have Disney songs in there as well. Um but they have their own Forest of Enchantment song. And I loved it. The performances we saw live were amazing. And yeah, it would just always hold a special place in my heart. I loved the Chaparral Theatre. I could just go on and on. So in it, number one for me is uh, the 25th anniversary show. Oh, of course. Um, It was just (laughs) seeing all those characters in one place and them singing about all the lands in Disneyland Paris, a place that I absolutely love. (laughs) It was incredible. I think I counted and there was like between 15 and 20 characters out on stage at once. It's at the end where they're just doing that last big dance and you can just see all those characters. Yeah, so for me, 25th anniversary. We must have chatted a lot because the battery is now flashing and we're trying to finish this before our camera dies. Because <laughs> yeah. we don't have another battery charged. But if you've got to the end of this video, thank you so, so much for watching. I know we rambled on a lot, but it has been so much fun to film. <laughs> yeah. And it's just been fun to reminisce. <laughs> so thanks so much for watching everyone and we'll see you in our next video. Bye! If you like this video, then make sure you hit the like button and subscribe. Toodle Pipski!